GDP here. And we're here to tell you, sorry, you ain't a real homesteader. Mm -mm. If you don't have land out in the middle of nowhere, you are not a homesteader. Now, let me tell you, if you don't have at least two chickens, guess what? You're not a real homesteader. Do you have a Gabby on? No? Well, you're not a homesteader. You're not composting a giant pile of human feces? Guess what? You're not a homesteader. You don't have yourself an Akita? Guess what? Sorry to say, you ain't a homesteader, son. You need one of these. Oh, you need one of these. Oh, how could you not have one of these? <laughs> Little fly covered. All right, you're watching the Green Dream Project. Jim here. And Jessica. And obviously, we're poking a little fun at an often discussed topic. Uh, but it can often get kind of heated and uh, it's often, uh, there's a little bit of debate on it. What, what is a real homesteader? What does that mean? What does it mean? What did it mean and what does it mean today? Are you a real homesteader? So obviously the word homestead has its roots back in American history in the before times. And in the 1800s, there was the Homestead Act that was signed into law by President Abraham Lincoln. And basically, the government was just giving away millions of acres of land. Most of it was in the West. And so millions of people came out to claim that land for free. Basically, it was just a big land grab. Homesteading was just a bunch of people going out. There was free land available. There was a bunch of people going out, making their claim, trying to get their own piece of the pie. And of course, once you had that land, you had to be self-sufficient. Yeah. It's the only way you could survive out there. It's harsh conditions and people were just making it happen however they could. Legally, they were required to live on that land for at least five years and then show some kind of proof of improving the land, you know, building things, maybe farming and stuff like that. And this is an unsettled territory. So the government was using that as a way to kind of populate a certain area. And it was up to the people that moved there, the settlers, to improve that land and to survive out there. Now, what does that mean nowadays? So does this mean you're not a homesteader unless you go out and lay your claim in the Wild West? No, it's ridiculous. In fact, I like owning your own land nowadays is, it's a d d difficult goal to achieve. And sometimes it might be uh, unrealistic for a lot of people. And some, a lot of people may not even want that. You know, there are a lot of people calling themselves homesteaders. And I think when you put a definition, when you put a term to it, people feel the need to define it. But I think nowadays it's really, it's really become more of a fluid term. And there's a certain pride in it. So basically what it means nowadays is just a move toward being more self-sufficient. And I think that's an excellent thing. I think that's definitely something to be proud of. That's a beautiful thing. And I see a lot of people making that move toward that. I think there is a sort of a rebellion against sort of the modern conveniences that we have nowadays, sort of the fear of what's in these products that we're buying. We don't know what's in our food. There are a lot of things that we don't know. That just happens to us. Being more self-sufficient, kind of starting your own homestead journey, is really all about taking more control of your life, doing more things for yourself. So I don't think it's about having anything in particular, like you don't have to have own land, you don't have to have animals. You know, we consider it to be more of the spirit behind it. It's definitely a spirit. And if that spirit moves you, 
toward being self-sufficient, you absolutely have to go with it. And learn a lot of those old skills that are being forgotten. Whether it's starting a garden, growing your own food, that's one of the big first steps. Growing your own food, and then just start where you are with what you have. So definitely, if you have that spirit of just wanting to be more self-sufficient, if you trying to move away from some of those conveniences, if not knowing what's in the food scares you and you want to get back to eating some real food, do that. Do that right where you are with what you have. Call yourself a homesteader, call yourself a city steader. I don't care. The point is, we love what you're doing. GDP has your back. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone. We'll catch you on the next video. Later. You don't have a big pile of human feces that you're composting? Guess what? You're not a homesteader. <laughs> I don't know. Whoa, whoa, hey. You haven't left yet, have you? <laughs> I have a big announcement to make. So GDP is going to premiere one of our episodes this upcoming Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Oh yeah. And after that, we're going live. It should be very cool. We're going to reveal the look of the finalized roof. All the gabions will be in place. It is going to be sweet. We're going to talk a little bit about our future plans with it, what's going to happen, upcoming projects. It's going to be awesome. We can't wait to see you there. Remember, 4 p.m. this upcoming Sunday, Pacific time. See you there. Yeah.